all right so now our api endpoints are ready now we will implement authentication mechanism in this we'll implement jwt bear token implementation <coughs> so for that first thing we need to install a package in our api project a nuget package we'll select the project manage nuget packages here we'll install Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication JWT Bearer. JWT. Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication JWT Bearer. Install it. Apply. Accept. Okay. Then we will have authentic this JWT related configuration so i'm going to add these in app setting dot development dot json let's say jwt the name is up to you you can name it whatever you want inside this we are going to have some secret key it is going to be some hard long key so it could be anything i'm just having this random stuff here let's have combination of Right. After this, we are going to have issuer who is issuing this token. So normally we use the same authority, the same URL. So let's have what is the URL. So this is this one HTTPS local seven zero eight nine. Let's use this then we can have expiration so here we'll say expire in minutes let's have this as one day one day means 12 hours times 60 so 720 minutes save it and we should be good now cool save everything first thing we'll work on generating the jwt token so where do we need that? We need that in auth endpoints, or uh, not auth endpoints, auth service in our login async method at the very end. Here we need that. So I am going to create a helper method here. Private async or not async, private void, not void, private string generate token. And we'll get user as a parameter from here we'll return this token and we'll store this token here we'll say generate token and we'll provide this user as a parameter so for generating jwt first thing we need claims so we'll have our claims let's have claims array claims equals first we'll have our id so we'll say new and for id i am using claim types dot name identifier name identifier user dot id dot to string and let's have name just name for this we'll have user dot name then we can have email as well user dot email i guess we are good with this right we'll see if we need any other we'll add this later for now we are good with these three all right after that we are going to get our secret key from our configuration uh, our app settings so for this what i am going to do i am going to inject i configuration here i configuration configuration let's create and assign a field here this configuration prefix with underscore now let's use this here we'll say underscore configuration dot get value of type string value will be from this app setting dot development dot json this jwt on the root we'll have jwt then to access properties we use colon so inside jwt we need to access the secret key so let's use this so jwt colon secret key now we have our secret key okay from this we will generate a security key the base 
byte array basically here we'll say system dot text dot encoding dot utf 8 dot get byte secret key then we are going to create symmetric key from this symmetric key equals new symmetric security key and here we need to provide byte array of the key so this is security key which we provided now we have our symmetric key from this we are going to create our signing credentials signing threads equals new signing credentials here we need to provide security key which is a symmetric key and then algorithm security algorithms dot from here we can select let's use smac sha256 now we are good with this now we can have our awt security token equals new jwt security token okay and it inside its constructor there are there are a lot of optional parameters we can provide so we'll see issuer will provide claims we will provide expires will provide signing credentials we are going to provide and we are going to skip all of that cool so let's provide one by one we have issuer because these are all uh, optional parameters so we'll use named parameters so issuer we know we have issuer in our configuration we'll say configuration dot get value string and here we have this issuer let's use this cool after issuer audience we are not using claims we'll say claims we have our claims for this then expires Here we are going to say date time dot utc now dot add minutes. So we are going to get expire in minutes, expire in minutes from the configuration. This is going to be int expire in minutes. This one. All right expire in minutes so we'll say add minutes expire in minutes after this we are going to have signing cred signing creds this is the name what is the issue here uh hmm why it is complaining about the issuer if the value is not issuer then this Overload for J does not have a parameter name issuer. Yes, it does. We just saw, right? Hmm. AWT security token. Yes, it is. This one. This one. Token. Yes, we have this public JW to secure token issuer. Yes, this is correct. All right, let's see what is if I do this signing. The name is not signing credentials, signing creds, it is signing credentials. Yes, okay, all right. We have JW to security token. Uh, from this we can generate our token then we'll simply say return jwt security token dot dot here we'll say new jwt security token handler dot write token here we'll provide a security token which is this jwt security token now with this our generate token method is done right now we are able to generate it now we will validate it for that validation adding the authentication and authorization we need to go to our app as program.cs file okay
okay so here before builder dot build we'll set up our authentication we'll say builder dot services dot add authentication then we are going to add jwt bearer then we are going to add authorization which we can't here we'll add another call so we'll say builder dot services dot add authorization we'll set this authentication and jwt bearer settings then in here in HTTPS redirection after this maybe we'll say app dot use authentication dot use authorization okay now let's set these uh, this add authentication and add authorization these two things first we'll set in add authentication we can have some options and say options dot we can set the default authentication scheme we are using jwt bearer so we'll use jwt bearer defaults dot authentication scheme same thing we can set to options dot default challenge scheme cool then we have this add jwt bearer we'll set jwt bearer related option okay main thing is here we'll set option dot token validation parameter this is of type token validation parameters class so we'll say new token validation parameters use using statement and then we are good we need to just set a couple of properties here right first we need to tell it what is the valid issuer for this token what is the valid issuer this we know this is the valid issuer this one from configuration we are going to get this thing so here we can access the configuration using this builder dot configuration we'll say issuer equals builder dot configuration get value jwt issuer like this same thing we'll get our security key here the key secret key sorry secret key and we need to generate our symmetric key so the same way let's copy these three things and have these here like this so instead of configuration it should be builder dot configuration Right now, valid issuer. We know this is the valid issuer. Now, do we want to validate issuer? Yes. So, validate issuer true. Right. Then we'll say issuer signing key equals this symmetric key. And we want to validate this as well. So, validate issuer signing key is true. And then we'll say validate audience. We'll simply set it to false because we are going to use it from the mobile app. So we are not validating the audience. And with this, I guess we are done. Cool. All right. Now I'll do one more thing. I'll do the automatic DB migration here. All right now we added something, this thing, right? Previously, but we didn't run this thing against our database so it's better to have this here so here i'm going to create static void let's say auto migrate db something like this here i'm going to have i service provider sp okay, here we'll say var scope equals sp dot create scope you can have using here we can get our db or use it as context so we'll say scope dot service provider dot get required service data context right then here we'll simply check context dot database dot get pending migrations if we have any pending migration 
then we are simply going to say context dot database dot migrate that's all what we'll do ideally we should not have it in our production scenario it should be only for development i'm going to have it here inside app dot environment dot is development auto migrate db here we just need to provide app dot services now it will simply migrate the database if there are any pending migrations with this thing we are good our authentication and authorization thing is also ready so i guess with this we are done with our api side of things now we'll move to the ui the mobile application before that let's quickly try to build it if it is building or is there any problem we'll fix it cool so we are done succeeded now we'll move to the mobile app 